This past week saw the release of a major USDA supply and demand report. Joining us now with this week's bottom line is Neil Malasaw. And Neil, any big surprises in this one? There were some surprises here, Mike, namely that both corn and beans are expected to have huge supplies for next year, which why that's surprising is based on some things that might not come to pass. First off, let's take a look at the numbers. Both the U.S. and world carryouts will be larger than last year for corn based primarily on a U.S. corn crop that could be a new record at 13.3 billion bushels. The one interesting note here is that this includes a larger than expected Chinese corn crop, which I don't think will materialize, but more on that in a minute. For soybeans, again, a year-to-year -year increase in the carryout, although a drop in South American production is projected due to, in part, an increased internal consumption. We'll have to see if that comes to pass as well. Finally, wheat also shows a year-to-year -year increase for domestic and world stocks as well, but interestingly, powerhouse Australia is expected to be down, while Argentina will more than make up the difference. Now, back to China's corn problem. Right now, there's a couple of factors that makes me believe we won't see that increase in China's production. One, they've just announced another six cargoes of U.S. corn bought just this week, and the USDA is expecting between 500,000 and a million metric tons of corn to be delivered this year. Number Number two, it has been unseasonably cold in the corn planting areas of China, with most of the corn crop yet to even go in the ground. With the internal price for corn at $7.50 per bushel and shortfalls in production, our plentiful cheap corn this year will certainly be more attractive. The bottom line, of course, Mike, is that this is an early report and we still have the entire growing season ahead of us. And Neil, very quickly, we saw earlier in the program that the oil spill is beginning to move a little bit west. What's the situation down in New Orleans around the port area right now? Well, the port does remain open for now, Mike. In fact, they have seen some ships come through with oil on them and have set up two cleaning stations near Boothville and Venice to handle any traffic that has gone through the slick. Neil Malonson, thanks. And remember, you can listen to any of Neil's reports on the Louisiana Farm Bureau Radio Network. For a list of stations, click on over to our website, twilatv.org. There you'll find the list. Just look for the link called LFB Radio Network on the right side of the home page. That does it for this edition of This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. Next week, we'll take you to Tangibaho Parish, where forestry waste is being used to tap an alternative source of energy. And remember, you can watch any of our stories online 24 hours a day. Just click on over to our website, twilatv.org. For all of us here at This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, I'm Michael Dana. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope to see you again right here next week.